What is up YouTube, this is Danny Draghi, and here are 10 things I wish I knew before playing Mirror 4. Number 1. Dark Steel is the most important thing in the world. Don't trade it for anything, with the exception of Dracos. Don't waste it. Getting the perfect enchantment can quickly drain you of that sweet sweet DS for a measly 10 extra power, or even less power than before you started. Only enhance your green items to level 3 or 4 because you won't have them long, and when you go up in rank or tier, you lose all enhancements and enchantments. Number 2. Don't focus on your codex early on. Filling your codex is tempting, but those items can usually be put to better use upgrading your equipment to a full rank 4 set. Once you're that far in the game, and you're getting those items much more frequently, that's the best time to start filling your codex. When you've upgraded to the highest rank set of items, or you're going up to the next tier of items. When you're using blue items, and you break a green item trying to get it to level 7 or 8, it's not the end of the world as long as you have the dark steel to cover it. Number 3. Use fast travel scrolls. They are very cheap and there is no limit to how many you can buy. They will drastically increase the amount of copper per hour you're making which makes them a wise investment. You can purchase these from any sundry vendor. Number 4. Be happy with the green mine and a static with the blue. Don't get greedy when it comes to dark steel mines. Sure the higher tiers are more efficient, but if you constantly have people fighting you over them, then you won't be able to make much at all. Number 5. Live and let live. PKing someone because they stole a chest or a mine from you is going to cause you to have to spend time and potions farming monsters for hours just to get back to neutral alignment. You will be avoided like you have some sort of disease or attacked without reason. It is better to give them a whooping, but let them flee with their lives in hand and a lesson learned. When they are killed, it alerts their whole clan who could be out for vengeance, even if you know they had it coming. If they draw blood first or have a red tag, go ahead and kill them if you want to, but be aware of the effect it could have on the other members of your clan if you start a war over a single dark steel mine. Number 6. You can reposition yourself between airwalks. When your initial airwalk comes to an end, most people know that you could jump a third time and execute a second airwalk to travel a massive distance in a straight line. What many do not know is that you're able to realign or reposition yourself between airwalks so that you blast off into a different particular direction. This can quickly get you around many maps that have long windy roads faster than if you were using a mount by letting you gain altitude and cut through everything with a few airwalks. But remember, being mounted or airwalking is still always slower than teleporting. Number 7. Set up your spirit pets and stones for a specific purpose. You have 5 slots and many pets or stones that are not being used, so put them to work. Try to make a loadout of pets, treasures, and stones that increase the damage you do to monsters, as well as the experience and copper you gain. Have another one specifically for bosses that does extra damage to bosses or reduces the boss damage and increases your drop or lucky drop percentage. Have another for PvP strictly with increased stats and skill damage to increase and reductions. You can have four or a fifth pet loadout for when you're mining and harvesting or meditating. The last two will be weaker than your fighting loadouts, but can be swapped out on the fly depending on whatever you're doing at that time. Number eight, don't break your items. The temporary power you gain from enhancing your items beyond level five is not worth the increased risk to breaking those items. The best thing to do once you get to rank 4 of an item is to enhance it to level 4 and use a mystic stone upgrade, the yellow ones. This has a chance to add 1 to 4 levels in a single upgrade without the risk of breaking your high rank item, which requires 8 rank 1 items to craft and a metric shit ton of dark steel and materials. The risk in dark steel required is just not worth it on lower ranked items as well, 1 through 3, unless you are already into blue items and you're just trying to fill your codex of high enhanced green items. Number 9. 
Do the limited events first, such as Magic Square, Secret Peak, Raids, Boss Raids. Many times I've procrastinated from using my tickets for these daily events and the clock ran out which wasted the additional experience, copper, drops, and resources I would have secured if I had. It is best to look forward to getting these out of the way as soon as possible so they never go to waste instead of waiting for the perfect moment that may never come. Number 10. Get as far as you can in the main story quest. Not only does the main story yield the best resources for quicker upgrading, you also unlock a very important mechanics that allow you to upgrade your character horizontally as well as vertically. I made the mistake that usually works great in other MMOs where I did a bit of story and decided to complete every side quest, daily quest, event, raid, mystery, and requests in an area before proceeding only to gain gradual strength of leveling instead of gaining an entire new system that would compound my attribute growth and allow me to clear the optional content much faster. I know I said 10, but you hung in there, so here's a bonus tip. Abuse the Vigor system. I flat out refuse to fight and quest unless I have some Vigor built up, or by using one of the many free pills gained through gameplay. If you didn't know, you gain 10 seconds of Vigor every time you harvest bushes, mine stone, or dark steel, and dance at the Dragon Aura, aka meditate. If you use tip number 7 to gain boost in these actions, you could accumulate 3 hours of Vigor in about 2.5 hours by increasing their speed. Remember, the vigor doesn't always count down, only while you're actually engaged in combat and for about 10 seconds after that, so commit to fighting and realize the extra time left will never be wasted. My current loadout offers 145% experience just for taking the time to gather resources that I need anyway in order to advance my character. Good planning and time management will allow you to alternate between playing and farming so that you always get the best of both worlds. Anyway, that's all the advice I could gather for this video. Hopefully maintenance has not extended again and we can all get back to it. And don't forget to stacko the Draco. Peace.